Good morning, micro followers. I hope this video finds you all happy and healthy. We've had kind of a problematic uh, last couple weeks on the micro farm. It seems like every little department's got their own little drama going on. So I'm going to cover a few topics. And if y'all have any suggestions, my ears are open. So in the duck enclosure, we have Poppy, right there, step forward, young lady, who has always been my faithful lair, and for whatever reason has only laid one egg since she's been moved to this temporary enclosure. She's getting calcium supplements, and she's getting layer feed, so I'm not really sure what's going on, but she is no longer laying. I've uh, provided two laying boxes now, just in case. One on the outside and one on the inside. In hopes that maybe that will provoke some laying. I'm not sure if ducks are like chickens. If I plant artificial eggs in these laying boxes, if that will kind of influence the laying process for her. Um, also, I've got the other females. Uh, five of them, actually, that are very, very, very close, if not at laying age. They are five months old now, so I keep expecting and hoping every morning that I come out that I'm going to have at least one egg in the box. It's not happening. Shen never has been a real faithful layer. Sorry. I mean, I'm just being, you know, for real. She looked at me like, excuse me. Um, but she's a Pekin, so I mean, that's kind of expected. Pekin's uh, general purpose isn't really for eggs. It's their meat. Sorry, but they, you are. You're considered a meat bird. <laughs> uh, so I might have had a dozen eggs out of Shen since I've owned her. Yes, Dusty, I hear you, lady. So on that topic, I've got this young man here who is not remotely interested in breeding. The girls get in the water. They start the head bobbing. They're just flirting like crazy. Well, Dusty, mostly. Dusty, Poppy, and Shen. Oh, yeah, and Gwen. And they're flirting like something fierce. And he will actually get out of the water when they start showing signs of interest. So... <sighs> I'm not really sure what to do about this situation. So, if you have any suggestions uh, or advice in any of those areas, please do chime in. And hopefully we'll have some eggs on the way soon. Next area. This majestic piece of woodwork here. Okay, P2 just caught something. I really wish I could have got that part on camera because she jumped about five feet high. Anyways, <clears throat> this magnificent piece of woodwork here uh, was resurrected over the weekend by my husband and I. The problematic area that I'm addressing right now is our local lumber yard. Jacked up this order so bad like, and we didn't even realize how much until we started building. So I'm not sure if it's too late to say anything or not. But this enclosure is going to have sidewalls right here along the back. And then the eight foot stretch that's on the opposite end, or I guess it's eight foot wide and uh, 24 foot long, 20 foot long, sorry. Um was all supposed to have sidewalls and a roof. And as you can tell, there are no two by fours there. Why? Because I didn't get them. Everything that you see that is not painted, we had to pull from my husband's leftover lumber from building the deck. So needless to say, really, really disappointed in root lumber. Uh, when you uh, place an order for $800 worth of lumber, I guess you just kind of expect it to be correct. 
So what happened was they sent a crap load of boards that I did not order that were the wrong size and were not pressure treated and gypped me on, mm, I think I counted 17 two by fours that I should have had. And like I said, we had to pull from my husband's leftover lumber. So I'm not happy with that. $800 worth of lumber. And when it was delivered, by the way, he pulled the truck up, even though I told him there were pallets to store it on. He pulled the truck up and, and dumped it off the back of the truck, which dented all of the ends of the two by fours and the plywood pieces. We had, I ordered 19 sheets of plywood and the two by fours and the plywood are caved in. So I'd love to classify it as a small setback with the enclosure, but it's a rather large, expensive setback with the enclosure. That's kind of my biggie. So onward, my little chicken nuggets. They're beautiful, aren't they? What's the problem, you might ask? Well, the problem is, three days ago, I put a big snake monster in their enclosure. And everybody's staying on this side. Nobody wants anything to do with a perch. They're terrified of a branch. Makes me feel bad. Today's day three. I was kind of hoping that maybe I would come out to the... Uh, this is actually the maternity hutch for the rabbits. And I was kind of hoping that maybe I would come out to the hutch and see them all perching comfortably. And no, it's not really working out that way. So I don't know what to do about that either. I mean, they're chickens. Chickens perch. And, you know, especially because, you know, they're getting older. That's kind of a thing that they need to know how to do. And mm -mm, that's not going to happen. It's a big monster snake that I just put in their enclosure. And everybody's scared of it. How do you encourage perching? <laughs> Onward. What could possibly be the problem with this little chunk of gorgeousness? Well, I will tell you. There's only six. There was eight. And I lost two to the heat yesterday. Really, really disappointing. Eight's the biggest litter she's ever had. So, I'm down two kits. So, enough of the problems already. Let's uh, share a little bit of good news. My two Osterlorps that you see right there, so gorgeously shining in the sun. They're officially laying. There are days where I collect a half dozen eggs a day, which is the most that I've collected since I lived at the schoolhouse. So I'm super stoked about that. My average is four a day. Sometimes there's five, sometimes there's six. That makes me a happy micro farmer. What's up, beautiful? What's up, beautiful? You wanna see? Say hi. Say hello. Say hi. Hello. I know you're beautiful. <laughs> so at least, you know, I got that going for me. And there's one other thing. Okay, so maybe two other things. Jerome, my handsome man. So I took my female that I pulled from two litters ago and chose her as one of my breeder does. And today she was introduced to this dudley man of a man. Not introduced, introduced. But their cages are together. Side by side, I mean. Uh, they've been a lot of kissing and making out through the bars. So once everybody gets used to everybody, we're going to go ahead and breed these two. Now, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Yes, this is his daughter. But 
with rabbits and several other breeds. Father-daughter is permissible in breeding in the bloodline, as well as mother-son. The only thing that's frowned upon where you start running into problems is brother and sister. But we don't have that problem. So, one positive thing is, they seem to be pretty fond of each other. And I'll keep you guys posted on that one. In the meantime, I've even got good news on these extremely unsocial little turds. The one that's shaking its butt right now, when it turns back around, of course, you'll notice it's got one single feather flipped up in the tail feathers. See that flip up there? See how the other one doesn't have it? None of the other ones have it. Just that one. That's a drake. Which puts my peak in count at three hens and one drake, which is absolutely perfect. When the other enclosure gets finished and all of the ducks get combined, well, not all of them. I've decided I'm going to put the Pekins together and separate the Welshies. But when the Pekins get combined, that's going to be one drake with five hens because I'm actually going to put Gwen in there too even though Gwen is a mix between a Welsh and a Pekin uh, you can look at her and tell she's obviously more Pekin than she is Welsh so yeah we've got a little mister right there that's going to make things pretty easy for me as far as uh, telling the difference between my drake and my hens but once I add Shen to three more hens <sighs> I'm not really sure how I'm going to tell the difference between everybody. And then there's you again. <laughs> You're so nosy. So anyways, that is the current status for Mission to Microfarm as of today. Got some problem solving to do. I got some enclosure problems to solve. And I suppose I have some extra special awareness to give to the rabbits. I'm not really sure what else I can do <coughs> as far as this heat is concerned. They get their cold bottles. Their water stays fresh. Throughout the day, I come out four times in a day to re-up on cold water and bottles. And they're in shade. And... Actually, the cool thing is the shade that they're provided is has got a really nice breeze that goes along with it. So, I don't know. Hopefully, uh, there are no more casualties. So, that concludes our update for the micro farm today. I hope everybody stays safe and healthy. And I suppose if it's up to your stay at home... Keep you guys posted on any changes. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Keeps me motivated to keep posting. I love you guys. See you next time.